Hello everyone, I am Beth Gold and you are joining me today in a five part series on content developer, how to be a content developer, design team, we're getting into the nitty gritty of the industry, I don't even know what to call this whole thing we got going on, but we're just going to get into it, and if you're joining me for the first, this is your first video with me or with this series, welcome, um, and make sure that you go through my playlist, I have a playlist for this and you catch them all, or at least topics you are interested in, please like and comment and share this video so that it can stay in circulation and it just doesn't go off into YouTube garbage land because sometimes that happens. So today, today, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get into it today. I'm gonna spill the tea for y'all today. Um, this is one that I have gone back and forth and, and tried to figure out if I should or should not um, cover this is a topic that a lot of people are scared to talk about in the industry because uh, they're afraid they're going to get blackballed. Um, I've just come to terms with the fact that we are all talking about it. Might as well just put it out there and maybe it'll just stop if we put it out there. And really, if a company blackballs me for this, they're probably the company I don't want to work with anyway. So um, here I go. Let me just stick my foot in my mouth and you know, get myself in a whole bunch of trouble. This is red flags in design teams or companies that you're working with. These are things that are red flags and you want to steer clear of it. First thing is if you go into get onto a design team and you are signing a contract and yes, you'll have to sign disclosure, non-disclosure acts and things like that. That's okay. They have to protect their, their product and their line. But if they require your credit card, run, run. Never, ever blindly give any company your credit card to work with them. What they can do with that is if they feel like you did not do a good job on a post, they can charge your credit card for the products. Or if you had a family emergency happen, they can actually go ahead and be like, oh, she missed her post. We sent her $300 worth of products. We're going to go ahead and charge it. Never, ever, ever give out your credit card. Never. I actually, um, there is a company that I adore. I love. Um, and I, I was talking with the owner, a really great person. Um, she actually has been burned a lot by designers. And I understand that that happens it does. Um, people get free product and they don't hold up their end of the bargain. Um, and that's wrong. And you'll get blackballed from the community if you do that. So don't ever do that. But she's had it happen and she's out thousands of dollars worth of products. And I get it. So she, I was going to be on her design team and I noticed that I asked the credit card and I'm like, no, I'm not doing this. I'm sorry. And I know that she was good and, and it was, but she was protecting herself, but I got to protect myself too. You know, um, I'm not, I, I, no, no, never give out the credit card ever. That's sketchy. That's sketchy. Don't ever do it. Okay. The other thing is if they want this one, um, this one cracks me up because this, I get this at least two, four times a week on Instagram, this offer. Um, if they won't give you product, but a discount and require you to post for them, nope, all that is for them, they are out nothing, people. If they give you, usually it's a 25% to 40% discount, they are, may not make money off of it, but they sure as hell are not risking anything on you and you're risking everything on them. What if you don't like the product? You are under obligation to post something on your account about it talking about how wonderful it is never ever go for that that and usually that's just a way for them to make a sale um it, it happens so much more so with people who sell watches and jewelry and clothing will contact you and they'll want you to do a cross promotion, meaning they want you to cross over from the creative industry land into the beauty and fashion world, which is awesome, but they offer you nothing. They don't even offer to share your post. They just say, hey, take 40% off of my website and you need to have posts done within two weeks of getting it. Don't do that, it's not worth it. It's really not. Now, 
with that being said, let's say that you have a company, because this did happen recently with me, um, well, about a year ago. You have a, <clears throat> excuse me, frog in my throat. You do, that kind of sounded like Yoda. Maybe not. Maybe only in my head. You do have a company that you like and you want to try their product, but it's a little bit steep. It's like kind of out of your budget and you're just like, I don't know. You can contact the company and say, man, I really love your stuff. Let me know, you know, if you ever want, if you're ever looking for design team or something. And sometimes they'll get back and they'll go, you know what? I'm not in a position to be able to send free product yet, but if, if I, if, if I give you a 40% off coupon code, um, and if you just will give me an honest review on it, when you get it on, you know, if you give an honest review on your YouTube or blog, then that's fine. I'll give you 40% off. That's okay. That's something you're interested in. You, you know, take that deal. They're not telling you that you have to say good things about them. They're, they're actually kind of putting themselves out there in the sense that they're saying, um, give an honest review, right? So that's a good thing. So if you have opportunities like that and you're, you really want something, but you can't necessarily justify buying it and they offer you 40% off for an honest review, do it. There's no harm in that. But if they contact you through Instagram, through direct messaging, and they're like, oh my gosh, we really want you to be a content developer for us. Here's 40% off. Once you place the order, you have two weeks to post something. Bye. No, 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 no. That is dirty. And that is wrong. And it really irritates me. You know, what's funny is I had, I actually had someone send that to me and I told them, I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to pay you to work. And they're like, well, you just don't have a following. I'm like, you're, you contacted me, you fool. I didn't, con I didn't say fool, but I'm like, you contacted me. I didn't contact you. I wouldn't even want to work with you if it wasn't for the fact that you contacted me. And then I didn't hear from them again. So, you know, think about that. Because sometimes they do get a little bit pushy and try to guilt you into doing it and make you feel like you're not adequate because you don't have 10,000 followers, which is stupid. They contacted you. Clearly, they're too cheap to go off and, like, hire someone in their own industry because, the beauty and fashion, and it usually happens in beauty and fashion. Beauty and fashion industry, they get paid eight hundred to three thousand dollars just for an Instagram post. Okay, so they're trying to be cheap. So don't let them treat you like dirt because you're an influencer in a different industry, and they just want free advertising. That's all it is. It's just them being cheap, and they might, you know, I don't want to invest in a company that can't really um, invest in themselves by paying people to work. That's not even right. You know, so there you go. That's another one. Um, okay, this one um, is, this is where we can, I can kind of get in trouble um, in this industry because I'm going to talk about this industry a little bit. If your design team want more than four cars a month or two mixed media projects a month as part of their terms, you need to really think about that one. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. And not only that, but it may not leave you enough opportunity to play with things you want to play with. And that's important. You need to be able to do that. You don't want to um, pigeonhole yourself just as being this designer for this company. What happens if the company goes under tomorrow? Then what do you have? So you really don't want to do, and that's just a lot. Um, and if, if it's a card company, and this is something you may have to explain too, is if it's a predominantly a card company and they want to get over to the mixed media world, their card makers, they don't understand that making a card, I can get a card video out, make a card, and it takes me maybe two and a half hours for that. Two and a half hours, four times a week, that's not bad. A 10 hour, um, a 10 hour commitment is not bad. However, a mixed media project, I can't do a mixed media project, um, edit a video and create it in two and a half hours like I can a card. That mixed media project usually takes me 15 hours. So I always, I don't like to do more than one a month mixed media. Uh, like, a, And then, you know, I'll do two sometimes. Um, I, I do two, but um, there has to be some fluctuation with that. And I recently had to drop a design team that I really liked because it's just like, oh my God, four mixed media projects a month. I can't, I can't, that's not, I'm that stifles my creativity and I just don't have that much time. I have 10 hours to devote to a team that's not paying me, but providing free product, but I don't have 60. Okay. So really think about that. Think about the commitment, the average. I say that if it's more than two a month, 
I'd be real leery about that unless you're absolutely positively don't use anything else then I don't know if I would do that because you're going to want to play with other things. You're going to want to put things that on your channel that um, is just exclusively something you enjoy and it may be provided through another company. Company you're designing for may not have that product. You may be part of a stamp and ink company and you really want to get into some texture and some stencils and that stamp and ink company doesn't provide it. You need to have time to be able to do that. Okay. So think about the requirements on that. If they make you sign a contract in which they take credit for your work or your ideas, that's not cool. That is stealing and that's gross. So if you have to sign a contract in which they, if like you create this project, um, and I've never really known this to happen before, where you create this or the companies I work for, I should say, you create a project. They only want it on their company channel. They want you to submit the directions to them. They don't want you to write the post. They want you to submit the directions to them and the project. And you are not allowed to post that on your social media sites, which is stupid because you think they want you to, to share it, right? And to sell their stuff. But some people, they don't. Um, that, no, that's not cool. That What you are doing at that point is they actually hire people, pay big bucks to do that kind of work for them. And all they did was give you free product for product that you literally have to just turn around and give back. So don't, don't ever do that. That's not good. That's just them um, being sketchy. I, I, like I said, I've never worked at a company, nor have I known, um, ever been interested in working at a company that does that. Okay, um, and then last but not least is if they don't pay you and or don't share your projects and tag you, um, that is something that you need to think long and hard about. If they're not paying you, they at least need to share you on social media and your pro and, and provide people with who you are. Um, if they're not doing that and they're just giving you free products, you need to consider if that is worth your time. Okay. Um, I've had some companies that just don't know how to do it and that's fine. Um, I, you know, I understood the situation, um, but they have to, so you're working really hard for a company and you are, you're, it, it's work, you know, um, they need to be sharing you and providing, um, your profile and things like that on their, on their social media company and, and, you know, things like that as well. And I'm talking about particularly if you are trying to go with this from an income point of view, you may just be strictly doing this for your own craft room and you find great joy in just creating for your friends and loved ones and not really, you don't care of, about, um, you know, growing your social media and whatnot. Um, so for you, them sharing on social media may not be a big deal, but, um, I, I think that it's super important that, that you're shared on social media, especially if you're working that hard. All right, so that concludes um, the, the red flags in the industry. Uh, we have one more to go, and then that's it. And then, um, yeah, so if you haven't subscribed, please make sure you do so. I always say that. I have to. It's like this. I'm like a robot at the end of the video. If you haven't subscribed, please make sure you do so. Give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you share. If you have any comments, please leave them down below, and I'll make sure to get back to you. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Beth Golden. How was that? Oh, my gosh. That was so fun. <laughs> Such a loser. <laughs> All right, you guys. Please join me for the fifth one. And, um, again, this isn't a playlist, so you can stop and go at your leisure or just keep it rolling. All right. I'll be back in a few. You may be back in a couple days. I don't know. Ha, ha, ha.